Titrations. Last thing in this chapter of other acid-base equilibria, we gotta talk about titrations. There are three main types of titrations you guys will talk about. A strong acid with a strong base. A strong acid with a weak base. A weak acid with a strong base. You will not have to deal with weak acid, weak base titrations. So your titrations are easy to recognize then. You're mixing an acid and a base, and one of them is always strong. Notice, when's the other time we mixed an acid and a base? Well, we just did it to make a what? A buffer solution. And students usually try and like make some sort of reaction between the two and figure out what's going on. No, just plug it straight into henderson hasselbach you're done. Don't even like write a reaction, just plug it into henderson hasselbach good to go for a buffer. But for a titration, you're gonna write a reaction. And that's where students get confused, they don't realize the difference. How do you recognize a titration? Well, you're mixing an acid and a base, and at least one of them is going to be strong. So we got strong acid, strong base. A good example of this would be like HCl plus NaOH. Then you've also got like strong acid, weak base. A good example of this would again be like HCl and ammonia. And then you've got weak acid, strong base, and a good example of this might be HF with NaOH. Question. Okay, so in the buffers we have a weak acid to strong base, but the two to one ratio, so how? Correct, well, and notice, here's the difference. To make a buffer, you can mix a weak acid with strong base and a two to one ratio. It technically makes it via kind of a titration type question, but notice the type of calculation though, did we actually do a calculation with that? No. no, but a buffer calculation involves looking at the concentration of weak acid and conjugate base. And so we wouldn't actually have done a calculation involving that in that case. Yeah, that, would that would have been more conceptual. We're about to do a calculation with it though here in a titration type calculation. No, key is this. If you're mixing an acid and a base and it's a calculation question, it could be a buffer question if the acid and base you mixed was a weak acid with conjugate base. Or it could be a titration question if either the acid or the base or both were strong. In this case, they're both strong. In this case, the acid's strong. In this case, the base is strong. That's how you know you're doing a titration. You've mixed an acid and a base and at least one of them is strong. Okay, so if we're dealing with buffers, you don't even deal with the strong base really Correct. Strong. As far as forming a buffer, a conceptual question, you can deal with it. But as far as calculation, we're about to deal with it. Okay. Sweet. Okay, so titrations. A couple things we can look at. We can look at the pH at the equivalence point. So we should talk about what that equivalence point means. The equivalence point in a titration is when you've added chemically equivalent amounts of acid and base together. So chemically equivalent amounts of acid and base together. If they react in a one to one ratio, it would be the point where you've added an equal number of moles together provided again they react one to one. So if we look at a strong acid, strong base titration, if we like kind of monitor the pH as we add milliliters, of, in this case say NaOH, what we would see is in this case the pH would start out very low and then it would go up. So and the inflection point on the curve here, right here, that is your equivalence point. That's when, in this case, HCl and NaOH react in a one-to-one -one ratio. What products would we get here? Cool. This would be the point at which you'd have exactly the same number of moles of each of these. And so only at this point in a titration could you say this, that the molarity of acid times the volume of acid equals the molarity of base times volume of base. Because if you look, what's molarity? Moles per liter. What's moles per liter times liters? Moles. Moles of acid equals moles of base. Another way of saying that, that's only true at that equivalence point, that inflection point in the curve. Cool. So one of the big questions you might get is they might give you three out of these four things here. 
and ask you to solve for the fourth. Great, it's just plug and chug. And it's from the equivalence point that you can do it. Well, what they would do is they'd give you all the data. They'd drag this down and show you that this is right at 20 milliliters, let's say. And they would tell you that you started out with 15 milliliters of acid. And you could plug in 15 milliliters of acid, 20 milliliters of base, and they'd give you the molarity of one of these two and ask for the other. Yep. Cool. So that's one nifty thing for the equivalence point. So the other side of the coin is, is at the equivalence point, if you're doing a strong, strong titration, the pH is going to be 7 at the equivalence point. Anybody want to tell me why? Well, at the equivalence point, I've had an equal number of moles of these, and the reaction goes to completion. How much HCl would be left then at the equivalence point? None. How much NaOH would be left? None. All I'd have is water. What's the pH of water? Seven. And salt. What kind of salt is this? A negligible one. Sodium ions are one of the negligible cations. Chloride ions are one of the negligible anions. And so I'd end up with water and a negligible salt, and the pH would be 7 at the equivalence point. Great. If you look at your strong, weak titrations, my way of remembering what the pH is, because the pH is not going to be 7 at the equivalence point anymore, is my way of remembering it is that the strong one wins. So in this case, it's the acid that is strong, and so the pH is going to be a little bit acidic, less than 7, usually like 4 to 7, somewhere in there. Not real acidic, but a little acidic. And in this last case, where it's the base that is strong, the pH at the equivalence point is going to be a little bit basic, a little bit higher than 7. So usually kind of in the 7 to 10 range. A little bit higher. Not really basic, but a little basic. Why? Well, it's all about the products. Let's look at our products here for a minute. What do I get for products when HCl reacts with ammonia? I get NH4Cl. What kind of salt is this? Well, chloride ions are negligible, but are ammonium ions negligible? No. And the cations that aren't negligible are acids. He's an acid. What do acids do? They cause the pH to go down. That's why it's lower than 7. Because this thing dissociates a little bit, forming some H plus in the solution, making the pH lower than 7. So here's the deal. You might get a question that says, why is the pH at the equivalence point lower than 7? If you say because the acid was strong, that's wrong. That's how I remember it, but that's not the reason, right? The reason could be given a couple different ways. Because the salt that formed is acidic. The salt that forms dissociates to form some hydronium. OK. A couple different ways that would be the correct explanation. Why is, when we do a weak acid strong base titration, why is the pH a little bit basic? And again, my way of remembering it is that it's because the base is strong. But that's not the reason why. It's not an explanation. What's the explanation we need to get to here? Well, what products are present? Water and NAF. And what kind of salt is NAF? A basic salt. Sodium ions are negligible, but fluoride ions aren't negligible. They really are a base as an anion in this case. And so the reason at the equivalence point that the pH is lower than 7, again, these have neutralized each other perfectly. Equivalent amount of moles in this case, 1 to 1 ratio. So all I got is water and sodium fluoride, but fluoride is a base. It will react with water in the solution to produce some hydroxide. Cool. That's why the pH is going to be basic. Your product's a base. Cool. If we kind of look at what these titrations would look like as far as the titration curve. Let's look at the one down here first. Ah, my weak acid strong base titration. If we graph, again, pH versus milliliters of, in this case, NaOH added, we see the pH starts out low and goes high. Couple of big differences you're going to notice here in this titration curve from the strong, strong titration curve. The beginning isn't so flat. So the beginning isn't flat, because the beginning is not in the buffer range. So the buffer range is right in there, where it's flat. Notice the equivalence point is right there. And that equivalence point, if you actually looked at the pH value, 
would be higher than 7, as it should be. Whereas here, that equivalence point would be exactly at a pH of 7 for the strong, strong titration. Okay. Second thing you'll notice, if you recall, when you mix a weak acid, strong base, in what ratio should you mix these to get a buffer? 2 to 1. Notice 1 to 1 ratio, that's all the way to the equivalence point. But if I go 2 to 1, then I'm only halfway to the equivalence point. I'm only way back here. Half the volume it would take to get all the way to the equivalence point. That's called the half equivalence point or the half neutralization point. And in a weak strong titration, that's the buffer region. This is the point where weak acid equals conjugate base concentrations are equal. That's the point where pH equals pKa. Or vice versa, pOH equals pKb would also be true. And so from a titration like this one, if you're given the scale here, you could actually look at the curve and just be like, oh yeah, pKa of this acid is somewhere right around there. And you could still, from the equivalence point, still figure out what the molarity, the original molarity of the acid was or something like that as well, because that's still true at the equivalence point as well. And in your weak strong titration, you really got two points here that are going to give you some clues. So to some calculations or at least questions you might be able to answer. But it's the half equivalence point where you get the pKa of your acid from. Cool, one thing to note. If you start off with 10 moles of HCl, how many moles of NaOH would it take to get to the equivalence point? 10, one to one ratio. But notice now I got a weak acid. He's strong, but now I got a weak one. If I have 10 moles of the weak acid, how many moles of NaOH would it take to, the, to get to the equivalence point? Still 10. Notice I'm baiting you on this one. Whether it's a strong acid or weak acid, it's still a one-to-one -one ratio here and a one-to-one -one ratio here on the stoichiometry. It doesn't take any less moles of NaOH to get to the equivalence point here. One of the questions they often give you is, which of the following is true? And that one of the false answers is that it takes less strong base to neutralize a weak acid than it does to neutralize the same amount of strong acid. Not true. It takes exactly the same amount. If you've got 10 moles of HCl or HF, it doesn't really matter. If you have an equal number of moles of both, it would take exactly the same amount of NaOH to neutralize either one. It's not, and you're not going to see that for weak acids anyways. You might see it for a strong with like H2SO4. So, and we'll go over one other exception for on a titration curve here in just a sec. So your last titration curve here. This one, we're actually following this as we add milliliters of HCl. And so in this case, we're starting out with just pure ammonia, which is a weak base. And so now the pH actually starts out high and goes down you still have your equivalence point. It's the inflection point in the curve. And way up here now, this gets confusing. Students often think it's way over here, but it's not. It's way up here, halfway to equivalence point. That again would be the point where conjugate acid concentration equals conjugate base concentration, and pH equals pKa. And again, that also implies I didn't write it before, but still just as true, pOH would equal pKb for the base as well. Cool. And the pH at the equivalence point here would not equal 7. It would be less than 7, somewhere below 7. Cool. So a couple distinguishes. You should realize that the original portion of a graph on a strong acid, strong base titration is flat, fairly flat, whereas when it's weak, there's a big dip or a big increase right at the beginning. And then you have a buffer region from which you can get a Ka from a weak, strong titration as well, or a KB for that matter. Questions about titrations? The curves anyways?
correct. I want to, the reason I had a two to one ratio is I want to get to that half a colon's point because I'll have half of my weak acid left. The other half will have already been converted into its conjugate base. That way they're present in a one to one ratio and as a buffer. Let's say you want to titrate H3PO4, and you titrated it with NaOH. Well, now we're doing a titration of a polyprotic acid. It's got three different H's that can donate, right? And has three different Ka's. And so what you see, it's still a weak acid, so you see that big jump at the beginning. You have three equivalence points. There's your first one, there's your second one, there's your third one. You also have three half equivalence points. There's your first one, there's your second one, there's your third one. So you might get a titration curve like this one. It might ask you, which of the following could be this acid? And you should look at this and recognize, oh, he's got three, he should have three H's that are acidic. He'd be a good choice. Exactly. What you should look for is it should go, it should turn vertical that number of times. So in this case, turned vertical once, twice, three times it turned vertical, so three equivalence points. But if you had some acid with five of them, which I can't recall one off the top of my head, it would have five equivalence points, five t points where it turned vertical. Cool. You ready for titration calculations? These are the worst of the calculations. Now here's the deal. Again, in your upper right hand corner of this page, there's the five types, general types of calculations. Strong acid, strong base, weak acid, weak base, and buffers. Every titration calculation ends up being one of those five types. That's why it's important to know those five types to begin with. Let's take a look at this. Let's get a clean slate. 